Today we're going to make a solid metal coyote skull. I recently bought a house in Joshua Tree from my sister Jessie and I wanted to make her a housewarming gift that would represent the desert environment. And the coyote skull door knocker seemed to make sense. So I bought a couple of skulls, they're about $15 each. I got them at a store called Paxton Gate in San Francisco. I knew I was going to make a urethane mold around one of these skulls, but because of the teeth and all the little pockets, I was worried that the mold making material would grab on to all these little nooks and crannies. So I did a little bit of coyote dentistry with my Ryobi rotary tool. This is really awesome. It has a flexible shaft so it's very easy to control the spinning head. I used modeling clay to fill in some of the deep pockets and gaps that would cause the mold making material to get stuck. I also beefed up the orbital socket bones that were around where the eye goes. I hot glued on some popsicle sticks to kind of raise the skull up so that I could glue it flat down to a piece of melamine. I glued it down securely because I don't want it to float up when I pour the mold making material over it. And then I used modeling clay to kind of smooth out the contours so that I would have an easier time removing the skull from the mold without breaking it. I hot glued some scrap pieces of wood around the skull and was ready to start mixing the mold making material. I'm using Mold Max 60 from Smooth On. It's a two part high temperature mold making material that hardens after you mix the two parts together. While I was mixing it I decided to make molds for a couple other items as well but and those may end up as projects in the future. After letting it cure for a couple of days I then stripped away the hot glue and began the process of removing the skull from the mold. Now in the past for concrete casting projects I've used materials like Mold Star 30 which is a lot more flexible and makes it really easy to remove the original item from the mold. But that material doesn't have the same temperature durability as this stuff and this stuff is also not quite as flexible so removing the skull was a little bit difficult. After struggling for a while I realized I was going to have to cut the mold all the way open. This isn't ideal but it just means I'll have to really press it together nice and tight when I do the molten metal process. Alright so I cleaned out the mold which is now in two pieces and was ready to start melting the metal. I just duct taped a few scrap pieces of wood around it to hold the pieces together nice and tight. The metal I'm using is an alloy made out of tin and bismuth. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. I like this material because it's lead free and melts at really low temperatures, just around 280 degrees. So I don't need a furnace or any specialty equipment like that. I just use this really cheap melting pot that I got from Amazon. Now I want the eye sockets to be hollow so I didn't pour it all the way full. I made sure that I could still see some red from the mold through where the eye sockets are. All right, while, while we're waiting for the metal to cool, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor for this project, NordVPN. Hi, Ben here. As someone that makes their living on the internet, digital security is really important to me. I use NordVPN to create a layer of security between me and potential hackers or identity thieves. It's also really handy when I travel to different countries where social media platforms that I use for work may be banned. A virtual private network not only protects me and my accounts, it also lets me tap into the internet that I want no matter where I'm at in the world. So go to nordvpn.com slash homemade and for a limited time get 70% off a three year plan. This is a special offer that makes your subscription just $3.49 a month. And then you can browse securely on all your devices. And for a short time use the promo code homemade to get an extra month of NordVPN for free. So go to nordvpn.com slash homemade to get 70% off and don't forget to use the promo code homemade for an extra month for free. I'm not the most tech savvy person but setting up NordVPN was really quick and painless and now I can rest assured knowing I've protected my digital self. All right back to the build. Once the metal had cooled I removed the duct tape and ripped the tin skull right out of the mold. I was now ready to work on the mounting plate and hinge for the door knocker. I traced the outline of the skull on a piece of 1 8 inch thick steel and then cut it out with my angle grinder. I 
I also took off most of the rust and mill scale and rounded over the edges as well. I drilled a hole through a piece of flat bar and then gave it a nice radius with my angle grinder with a flap disc. I then welded this little tab to the mounting plate. I then marked the location on the back of the metal skull and then started drilling through the tin to remove the material to make a place for the hinge. Tin is relatively soft and I had nice sharp drill bits so this wasn't that difficult. Once I had drilled out a nice slot, I placed the skull and then drilled a hole through the side so that I could put a bolt through so that everything would swing nicely. Once I had it mounted with the bolt, I could then see that the mounting plate was a little bit too long, so I just trimmed that down. I primed the mounting plate with two coats of Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer before doing a finished paint job with this really nice light gray color, also from Rust-Oleum. The head of the bolt wasn't sitting flush to the skull, so I used my rotary carver just to remove a little bit so that it could sit nice and flat. I also used this handy tool to trim the bolt as well. Jesse's front door isn't ready yet, so I just screwed the mounting plate to the wall to test it out. The bolt fit in nicely, and this heavy-duty 5-pound door knocker sounds great. This project is a little bit silly, but I do like the idea of taking organic objects that relate to the environment that you're in and turning them into semi-useful objects. This is also just a great way to really define and set the tone for an aesthetic of a house. If you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.